Sup Shredders, my name is Logan aka Spiderhands and welcome to an SP Reviews where today we're going to be checking out 6 tracks from an act named Rose Blossom 7's titled, uh, well the first one of these being titled Smoking and Drinking. If we switch over to here we have ourselves the 6 tracks, well one of the 6 tracks on uh, YouTube Music, they're all going to be on here today. Just before we get into it as well, we're going to be giving each of these tracks an overall score based on several different musical criteria and they'll be shown per track in the conclusion section for each. But we're going to listen through this first track as well as the others from start till finish. And we're going to hear what we think. Starting with smoking and drinking, let's go. Huge bass response immediately. Vocal chops with the bass and drums. I do like the bass response to the 808 though, I think it's really nice. A little riser there. Interesting use of meta tune there as well on the vocals. I mean, just the, the resonance in the sides there is ferocious, right? That was a solid start to proceedings here with smoking and drinking. Um, apparently this track, if I'm not mistaken, it's about addiction and sexual casualties. If we aren't getting high off love, confused by lust, we are getting high smoking or drinking. We only get along if we're having sex or getting high, um, which is a toxic environment that we're comfortable in. These are descriptions from Rose Blossom 7s, by the way, for these tracks. And just listening through the lyrics, I can kind of get that. It's an interesting environment. The, uh, the darkness of the 808s intermingled with the slow bass of the drums with the kind of clicky sort of cymbal patterns there there's kind of an authoritative feel to it kind of somber almost like we're a little bit sort of like sad or down about it you know almost like we need to be sort of like medicated in order to get by the music with the minor feel across the board there um, resonates with that quite well i can hear that connection there the meta tune or the retreating and all the vocals which are quite quiet in the mix they kind of make you imagine as someone kind of sort of suffocating underneath that awareness of the situation they're in and now they're kind of struggling with it 
And I think ultimately it's a track where, you know, it's just sitting with that mood there the entirety of the time there. I like some of the vocal chops or the leads we had initially there before the vocals came in, if I'm not mistaken, they might be insane, but like it was great to have a bit of color in that mid range there, even if there's a bit of filtering there. Nice to have occasional rises to sort of show things moving aside there and movements to this far side to stereo feel with a really kind of like gritty bass tone there. Lots of distortion and grit within this track to show the struggle. It was a loud mix though, I think it was pushing on the limit levels all the the faders a little bit but that's okay great start to proceedings and i think yeah you just get a feeling that the singer is just kind of just frustrated and sort of almost sort of done with it there a bit of complication with the harmonies but not too much it's fairly straightforward lots of variations with the vocal tail though to be fair i quite like those too so there's a fair bit of effort to try and keep the vocals compelling and now we have track number two for today reason the full song off of hard lessons and love if i'm not mistaken that's give me a reason. Give me a reason. It was quite almost sort of repellent off the back with some of those notes there. I wasn't initially a fan of just that first section. Some of those notes were a little bit clashy for my tastes. The uh, drums are so ferocious. I'm going to try not to pause too much. There's such a ferocious tone to them, but the leveling overall is still, it's still okay. You can hear the vocals clearly, even with a bit of pumping. Now that was cool, the turntablism as well. I enjoy that, that's great. Every day the rain from my eyes piled up like raindrops that fall from the sky. Couldn't see that your charm you was wearing in the sky. You discuss me hiding behind closed doors with all your lies. I won't settle for less, no, I won't minimize. It's not my thing big, it's time to maximize. Thing big, it's time to maximize. All the abuse that I put up with, I ain't your job, but you try to chastise. It's over and done with, man, and I try to compromise. Then it's time for me to stop worrying about I. Yeah, 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 yeah.
Yeah, that's a good track. I kind of, I wasn't, in, I was not initially sold on Reason at first. I think my understanding, I'll just get the description of it. This particular song apparently is, is a question of why can you explain yourself? Are you able to give me a re explanation of why? What's the reason? I think my interpretation from listening to the lyrics of this track, Reason, is that we're more discussing the reason for us continuing to, con to go through life, to come out of our situation, to rise up. They talk about overcoming the, the abuse and trying to get away from that and everything like that and find a better life for themselves, kind of cling, clawing their way up from that, trying to find a raison d'etre, so to speak. And I, I, the lyrics and, and the description make sense to me. I, I listened to the vocal performance within this, and I think specifically we had a similar kind of like, if we had we had more with the vocals going on now than we did the previous pack. I'm going to add the vocals more. I like the vocal style and the modulation. There's also some rat parts as well, which were kind of dope in the mid-range there. But initially, again, with the meta tune being nice and, and fresh sounding, you know, like with the rap part being a nice sort of contrast there, and with the track being quite structured with, again, with like different rap and sung parts, with a similar motif throughout, but then like kind of adding some turntablism later on for a bit of extra spice there, I kind of dig the chopping going on there. It's just we had some instruments at the start which were not behaving well with each other. There were some clashy notes there that I didn't particularly enjoy. I'm not necessarily sure if that were the right decision there. Maybe it was meant to sort of like instigate or show the person the conflict or the chaos that they were going through at the start of the journey they were going on before they moved forward. Ultimately though, I think we had like strings and keys and bass and drums within this as well as the turntables and the stuff going later on. I think where we had a had a really powerful kick drum with the, the the kicks just cutting into the mix there, a consistency with the low with the bass and subs and stuff like that. With that, like there was almost this romanticism though with the strings there, with the flurries as well as some of the twirly bits going on, some of the pseudo leads there, holding it to the vocals, which I appreciated. You know, navigating those chord progressions with those extensions on the keys quite well as major and minor sevens to illustrate the emotional complexity that they're going through. In the, in the mid range as well. It's, I, there were parts I liked about this track. Most of it was very, very good. It's got a similar score to the last track for different reasons. But yeah, ultimately, you know, good stuff. And then track three, we have Complicated Heart. Okay, sick drum groove, that's cool. Okay. Where are we going with this? I feel like this one's a little bit better level than the previous ones. It's not as intense on the, the, the mastering chain. We've got kind of like a loop that we're comfortable with, adding different instruments to sub layers over top. And some reverse takes, it's kind of fun. That was nice, I didn't catch that. 
I was, that's annoying. I didn't catch the end of that. I tried to pause just before the end. It can be good just to allow like a moment after the track ends just for Tails to kind of pan out as well. Just as a general rule, but still, like it's it's cool. Complicated Heart apparently is about the fact that you can't manage another person's heart. You can't control who loves a person, how they feel. Real love matters of the heart isn't hard to figure out. It isn't a conundrum or a complication. Love is unconditional. It's there being there no matter what, good, bad, right or wrong. I think that while I didn't necessarily get a lot of the lyrics clearly, I was paying attention to a lot of different things within the mix. I feel like I was almost a bit overwhelmed by all the stuff going on within it. I kind of like the fact that Rose Blossom 7's allowed the instrumentation to be able to... Like, we had clean vocals, and I was paying attention to the quality of the vocal performance. It's just some of the words didn't come through clearly. But, like, um, I did appreciate the fact that we allowed the music to tell the story. There were a lot of different flurries with the, the, the drum parts, the, the bass lines, the strings. Interesting sort of string flurries there. Ba -ba 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 -bum -bum. Some parts slower, other parts a bit more peppy there. Almost some sort of dissonant sections there, sub layers on sides of the stereo field there, little kind of like sort of like uh, little twinges or whinings or something like that. Just kind of sounds that like Ill illustrate a sense of complexity with the situation, with, with the way we're feeling about that lack of control over someone else's heart there. It, it does sound like it's a complicated piece. I think that complication of the arrangement is indicative of the complication of what the actual person is 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 feeling. So in that regard, even though there's a lot going on within that motif, despite the fact it's repeated quite a bit, ultimately I think it's nonetheless effective. It's a short track of 2 minutes 25 there. You did allow quite a bit at the end to to almost appreciate um, the, the, the backing as much as the main vocals. And those like brasses as well are the little perky kind of stabby bits there. And near the end, they're like those reverse takes, almost like we were ruminating through our feelings back in our head there, were playing things back, which was kind of a dope, dope idea, honestly, like, because ruminating being a big part of kind of figuring out, you know, that situation with the other and how they feel and all that. I think this one scored a little bit higher than the others. Overall, I was a bit happy with the way how things sounded and behaved together within the arrangement. I thought the vocals were a slightly better level, even though they're still a bit quiet for my tastes. And I think that the production in general wasn't as loud and kind of, um, it wasn't as in your face and kind of like uh, abrasive with some of the harsher kind of distorted gritty elements you had in previous tracks here. Like in a previous track, the kick switch is very, very loud. And even though things were leveled, they were, they were so, so on your face this is a bit softer and i guess maybe i just prefer the kind of the drums in this you know it's it's good it's nice though but now we have emotional walls by what rose blossom sevens track number four. Oh, it's so loud i mean it's pushed i kind of dig it though yeah i don't think it's i think it's a stylistic intentional thing because the kicks are still sort of like well balanced there they're side chain so we're deliberately trying to make a loud track Yeah. That was quite loud. I'm not sure if we needed to have the vocals as prominent in the mix as we did then, but if we were trying to allow for dynamic range, that's fine. Again, this filtering here, they clearly understand that element of post-production.
So that was cool. What I liked about that is we faded out at the end. That was kind of dope. There we go. So back to this. So apparently track four, um, Emotional Wolves. This is a song about isolation, keeping one's emotions intact. I'm learning how to love me. I know what it's like to reciprocate love, but I, do I know what it's like feels like to give to myself what another person can't. The song reminds me of Stranger Man. Yeah, storyline. Oh, okay, I get it. So basically, yeah, no, I can kind of, I can hear in the lyrics there about in the chorus sections especially when things rise it almost makes me sound as if we are sort of really struggling with being trapped in that room alone kind of working on ourselves there trying to figure stuff out after leaving i suppose the, the abusive relationship that they were used to be in where we had to kind of have been numbed by alcohol and all that kind of stuff um there's a journey that we're going on here this person's going on a journey of growth it's almost um it's interesting to listen to this is kind of what i like about sort of bigger reviews where you kind of he get a sense of direction for that person throughout what they're trying to accomplish here. And I think there were, we did some stuff here that I appreciated. I mean, like I liked the variation with the different vocal lines and I liked the fact we tried to make bigger vocals in that chorus section there. We double tracked or something like that, even though if it, it was quite loud and mixed to us, I think it was maybe too loud for the rest of the track, given how loud this, this song already was with how pushed it was and, and the limited, it was just, things were distorting like like digitally distorting and stuff like that it, it it was a deliberate decision i think to get those um the drums the, the bass sub bass just pushed just pushed so hard it's 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 to the point where like i feel almost sort of like like i have to s specifically focus on that in order to take it in like because of how the sub was pushed like i didn't necessarily pay as much attention to some of the key melodies with some of it but those little kind of like lighty notes they're coloring the sides of the stereo field and, and the upper parts of the freezy spectrum with a bit of glow there i imagine this track going through a subwoofer and like a car would be absolutely just ferocious it would it would be super bassy man super bassy it kind of sounded like you the, the song made me imagine what it would be like to be alone working through that on your own i think there'll be an audience of people who have been in similar positions to rose blossom sevens and what they're describing he'll be able to relate to the intensity of that as well as the crying out part the quiet and loud and the kind of variations within that i kind of get how the harmonies within the main motif for this reflect the complexity of what they're going through there without any too many hard edges and i like the fact that we were trying to be more expressive with our vocals there ultimately it was a track where there wasn't as much much sort of like uh variety within the backing arrangement if i'm not mistaken but still it was well carried and i appreciate as opposed to the previous one but it, i think i think it was well carried and uh we're continuing we're, we're doing well and then we'll go track number five i am let's go a little bit less digital grain in this one which is kind of nice So this is about like someone's personal identity and like trying to sort of like just that they have to accept us for who they are or something like that.
Now, now that's fun. That's fun. Is that like a vocal? Like that's us going up into a higher range, right? The um the meta tune, the treatment we've got there, kind of makes it sound like it's a synth. I like that. Stylistically, it's kind of dope. And uh, that was the track there. I just uh, again, just the same comment I've had before. It can be good to when we uh, bounce a track in our digital audio workstation or whatever we're making it through. If we allow just a bar or two after when we bounce it, just so that things kind of fade out naturally, and then it also gives a listener a chance to know, hey, we're moving into the next one. It's great if you've got an album and you're immediately like you're you're you got like a transitory thing between two different tracks that you kind of need to follow through immediately but if we're doing individual tracks it'd be good to allow them to be separate but uh what do i think that this track is about this is number five i am or what have what have i been recommended this is a song about spirituality warfare it's being able to overcome struggles challenges triggers stresses and obstacles of the world try to take you down you have to adapt the environment you have to improvise and turn a negative energy into positive energy that you can manifest and to good so i kind of I, I understand that it's probably a track therefore with, with what i heard about like you think it's easy to be me etc you're trying to change who i am lyrically i think it's about someone trying to sort of cope with the challenges trying to overcome maybe they've been in that room by themselves for a while you have to basically do what you can to to improve your own life and overcome the challenges ahead of you in any way you can because you're in, responsible for that i suppose that that you know no matter what people think of you to an extent I think the, the vocals reflected that quite well. We weren't overly expressive with it, but what I kind of liked was the fact that we turned our sort of vocals into an instrument, like, like the vocoder stuff later on. They're kind of going up to an upper range, and it sounded like a lead synth. But ultimately, it was a sort of kind of chilled, calm demeanor that we've had. And for, for most of this, it's accessible and it's appreciable. I, I, I think that structurally, this track, again, it had a similar motif played throughout, like a lot of the other tracks we've had within this. I think oh, it, it does its job well. It's a very somber sounding track with the drums, the bass. Um, it's quite a heavy sounding song. Again, the, the drums have been pushed. It's very loud. You know, there's not, there's not, there's very little to no dynamic range within this piece or a lot of them. And I'd say maybe that's one of the things we could improve on for future tracks to allow a sense of dynamic range there and to just sort of make sure under LU 14, LUFS or whatever the recommendation is for um, uh, the, the mix that you're working on there for audio workstations or digital stream platforms but uh, the keys were pretty there we had some sparkles on the right side there some jazzy intonations the drums had some interesting eighth and sixteenth note shuffles there at half time the bass was thick and full and and uh it was a, it was because confrontational it was as assertive as it needed to be yeah i i honestly like i feel overwhelmed by a lot of these tracks again due to the lack of dynamic range here but i also appreciate we're trying to make loud songs we're trying to sort of make them potentially even like loud like we hear a lot of modern music is being released like because a lot of people have figured out how to get these tracks loud whilst also again having that dynamic range but it's very difficult to do and i think we're on our way there there's a lot of positives a lot of the filtering and transitions and risers and choices like that have been really positive it's just yeah we're still kind of getting the finishing touches on that but ultimately yeah there's a lot to appreciate kind of managed to sort of remain sort of contemporary and kind of like slick sounding and fashionable whilst also communicating what we need to do vocally and lyrically and so we have the last track here for today i wish you number six now just to let you know i'm also going to be having a look through the lyrics of these at the end and sort of commenting on those as well as the score for the rest but um let's go because i think this has got a male vocalist in it if i'm not mistaken could be wrong we'll see how it goes Phenomenal.
I mean, this is phenomenal. This is, I feel like this is a big step up. It's not only that, again, I liked the vocals we had previously. It's just this this guy can really sing. And it's without that meta tune, auto tune, the, the trans, which is, again, I don't mind the vocal modulation. It's just it's just nice to have that bit of range there. I feel like if we were to go between some of the kind of vocal to meta tune stuff, and then maybe this guy's cleans, that could be a really compelling piece. Um, I wish that you were mine. Great coming on to the sides, production wise, fantastic. I love that bass line actually. I like the way it rolls up the scale shape like that. Yeah, phenomenal legato passages, dude. Really wonderful, really solid vocalist. And that fade out is so classy at the end. That is so good. We're still a little bit pushed in the mastering chain with some parts, but that production was solid. It was really good. This was so much better. I really enjoyed that. I think it's just a lot of the other tracks I've listened to so far from Rose Blossom 7 have just been a bit too loud, as I've said before. But when you have that fade out at the end there, this is getting close to sounding commercial grade, and I really appreciate it. Now, before we get into the lyrics, I'm just going to have to sort of like get them on the screen. But I also want to note that Rose Blossom 7s wrote the lyrics for this singer. So I'll be right back. So I'm just going to look through these lyrics that I got sent. I had to reformat them, I'm not sure. I'm hoping these sentences are in the right order, but like I'm sure we'll be able to make sense of it. I wish you from afar, I look up in the sky, you're the light of me, I reached up to grab my sparkling star. So I mean the verse is talking about how this person is like a wish of theirs and they're like a star in the sky and, and they're sparkling and they, they reach up for it. Um, there's no you and I apart. Yeah, so clearly they are in love each other. I can feel your heart beating through your chest when close to me. She said, all you got to do is call on me. Every wish is my command. Tim and take my hand. So clearly there's like physical intimacy there. They can feel the beating heart and everything like that. So they're not only the star in the sky. There's a sense of sparkle and magic about this relationship. Um, with, with interesting imagery, again, of like the sparkling starts, you can easily imagine, imagine, imagine it and visualize it. 
right? I think a lot of people will be able to relate to lines like, I could feel your heart beating through your chest when close to me. It's stuff that most people can sort of understand and recognize and kind of take in. You're my dream, my wish, my every thought of you are in me. You take the darkness away, you're the light inside my eyes, you're my fat number one fantasy. Yeah, I mean, these are all lines where like, you listen and you think, yeah, these are things you'd say if you love someone, if you appreciated them. They're very romantic, you know. There's a lot of charisma behind the vocal performance as well, which really sells them. When I rub the lamp, a genie appears. So I suppose this is more of kind of like the where the person's wish came from in the first place. When I first saw you, my vision was so clear. Just like a lost treasure I found you, lone love could ever measure. You give me so much pleasure. With intimacy, you're my reality. Could this be real? This is the love that I once felt. Oh, baby, you're my wish. Yeah, so literally, you're kind of coming down to like the genie and the lamp kind of aspect of the wish here. It makes sense there. You can imagine it kind of like an Aladdin-esque kind of thing there. You're my dream, my wish, my every thought of you are in me. I take the darkness away and you repeat the chorus here. You're like, whatever we hope for, you're my wish, I come true. Um, I get it. I understand the track. So like to talk about the lyrics, I suppose, in the overall sort of like track conclusion uh, for I Wish You, what I understand from the lyrics, I thought they were quite well done, by the way. I mean, it's there's there's they're not exactly like, how do I describe it? They're poetic, but not to the extent where they're trying to be sort of like mysterious. They're, again, the sentences are very straightforward and easy to understand. They're accessible, I think, to a wide audience there. The, the movements between the first verse sort of talking about star in the sky and the heartbeat makes sense. I kind of feel like if I was going to give feedback on like the, vo the, the verses themselves, you'd kind of potentially instantiate you made that wish in the first place. Because at the moment, it's kind of like you're saying you got it from the star in the sky and then you felt the heartbeat. But then you're saying, oh, but I also later on, this is how I found the person. Usually you might have the origin story at the start there. It's just a personal thing, though. Sometimes, you know, you have like the main crux of it and then there's further context added in the second verse, which is fine, too. But the, the words and the sentences make sense. The flow of it is absolutely fine. And uh, yeah, the chorus section with the lyrics, um, where the lyrics like, you're my dream, my wish, my every thought of you're in me, you take the darkness away, being like the shining star, you know, you're the light inside my eyes again, you're my number one fantasy. Yeah, it makes sense. So the lyrics are well well written. They're effective for this. They're very kind of R&B, kind of like, um, like very romantic lyrics. And the guy who's in, singing in this does a tremendous job of vocalizing. They're very comfortable within their head and chest voice. They're very easy to sort of understand what's going on for them. Um, they sing it really eloquently and effectively and ultimately it's a track where um, it sounds like a commercial single for the most part like they, they, they nailed it in this one I was really impressed with I Wish You it scored higher than the other tracks I think this is a really positive piece I still would have preferred a bit more dynamic range in the mix and stuff like that but aside from that it's very good Maybe a little bit more sort of range in the instrumental pattern behind it, but that's okay. You could have had different sort of chord progressions for like the verses and choruses and stuff like that, but if we're comfortable with the beat there, we more or less kind of change the layering of the instruments in here more than anything else. The, the instrumentation behind it, the keys there, the organs, the bass and drums were well handled there. We had similar sort of like, we had like sort of like sort of sort of triplet kind of hi-hat kick and snare patterns, which are, you know, they handle well with the kind of more modern sort of hip hop and rap stuff with those k k tones there. But um, so it's more kind of modern and trying to approach to sort of those sen sensibilities but the, the bass line under, underneath it was more sort of potentially electric bass or even sort of like moogish there so it was a bit more sort of like gentle sounding than some of the 808s we had previously the guitar parts with the plucked elements there are a bit thinner sounding and they kind of pecked away at the sides of the stereo field there in a way which enhanced the feel of the track there with very gentle organ harmonies behind it y yeah I think that the instrumental part behind it there was enough range with the backing to appreciate I think the most of the magic though was the backing vocals as well going in the backing vocals to the sides of the stereo field and some of the chorus sections going into main vocals for like lead focus we didn't have, need an alternate lead in this track that was well handled and I've got really no complaints about it I think it was probably my favorite track off of these six that we've reviewed today and yeah, again, like even though I again just to pre can finish before the overall conclusion, I, I appreciate what we're trying to do with the um, with the studio mixing and mastering here. A little bit more dynamic range, I think it would have been absolutely where we needed it. And welcome to the analysis and conclusion section of my review of these six tracks from an act named Rose Blossom Sevens. Now, I've spoken about what each track individually is about. I also want to give a final shout out to the lyrics and I wish you as I know specifically they were written by Rose Blossom Sevens for the male vocalist in that I thought we did a solid job with that. I think that the storytelling was vivid. 
Um, I think aside from like a comment I made about like the the, the, the the placement of some of like the sentences and the story elements there in regards to the verses, it was a it was a very kind of like accessible, easy to understand, romantic track which had a lot of the platitudes that you typically expect from songs within the genre, whilst not becoming sort of cheesy or sort of overly generic. I appreciate the imagery there as well with the stars and the genies and stuff like that. I thought it was great. You can kind of understand what's going on there in a way which is enhanced further by the vocal performance. This, this each track had a specific story that was about. We spoke about each of those in individual sections, so to go through them for another five minutes within this conclusion section may be a bit much. I'll go through the tracks quickly. Basically, you know, smoking and drinking is about like numbing a relationship through substances and because it's just not good enough by it on its own, you need to kind of use that to get the reason for. Reason is like, you know, finding a reason to continue or to kind of go through yourself to, to find it, validate your actions, to wonder what you're even on this purpose for. Complicated heart was knowing you can't control someone else's heart and trying to sort of figure out how to sort of navigate that and find your own sort of truth and control in that situation for what you can do. Emotional walls is about being on your own and kind of working things out on your own and talking to yourself and kind of having that sort of like loneliness, but provided the opportunity to actually grow through the self awareness and kind of understanding yourself better that can potentially come from that opportunity i am which is basically sort of like talking to yourself understanding who you are accepting that and moving forward to try and sort of like kind of find your own place in the world and kind of get yourself out of your situation and i wish is about but i wish you is about someone who was like found their like shining star in the sky there their, their, their wish that jenny they wished for them they got it now very very happy and it's very bright vibrant and uplifting and i think again that's one of my favorite tracks of out of the six the vocal performances were typically either rose blossom sevens with like their vocal runs like with metatune or sort of vocoders on their track they're quite heavily modulated but very sort of like tonal and very colorful melodically i didn't always get the words through clearly but when i did the lyrics made sense and i think that as well there were some interesting sort of like rapping parts i think in the second and track and then we had some sort of like higher range almost sort of synth latest kind of stuff and we went up to the higher notes and belts the sixth track had a i'm not sure who the the guy uh, if i know the guy's name i'll put it in the video but basically the singer in that track um, did a fantastic job of um just nailing the aesthetic of that piece as a whole there with the instrumental backing and the lyrics provided there um incredibly sort of like detailed and de textured um main and side leads there with backing vocals there and it was incredibly well done i was really stoked with the note choices there the harmonies there some of the classy sort of like twirls and everything we did later on there and we had it was like a clean performance that just sounded fantastic it was very it was it was great it sounded that that was the closest thing we had we had to a commercial single single which i i appreciate I think, yeah, the vocals were handled really well. We had different styles, but we managed to sort of like place all them correctly with interesting, again, interesting note choices and, and different rhythm patterns and stuff like that. It never became superfluous and we weren't afraid of sort of taking a step back to let the instruments to do their thing as well. Each of the tracks had different setups, but typically they're about like two to three to four minutes. Like they, they were different lengths because they had different stories they wanted to tell there. Um, most of them had a sort of a, either it was through composed or we had sort of more contemporary structure with i wish you where you had like a verse chorus verse chorus there which was easier to understand and follow along to i like the fact that we experimented with different song structures there to not to kind of like a figure out what we liked and what we didn't like there as i remembered i needed to provide an overall score for this these six tracks there i think they the overall they got a 7.1 out of 10 but like song structure wise through composed or like more contemporary the main instruments we had in these pieces were drums bass and and keys honestly there are other sort of like plug guitar parts there were string elements there were all sorts of sort of pseudo layers and sub layers and stuff like that as well as some turntablism occasionally it was great with the chopping of that when we did have strings they invoked a sense of um like drama or like as if like um there was a bit of excitement with those strings because of the movement there we kind of juxtaposed between kind of going slow and then kind of speeding things up and we kind of moved backwards within that loop there it was very satisfying it had sort of like a very friendly overall sort of like tone to it there are interesting note choices it's like we understood to include other elements apart from the main sort of like keys bass and drums to keep things interesting and to sparkle and stuff we we do have some we do have awareness of like music you know the fundamentals of music theory and composition there the drum grooves was what typically there were there were hi-hats and there were kicks and there were snares there we didn't really have any fills or anything like that we had similar sort of like a drum lines put throughout there very occasionally we didn't but most of the time we kept similar kind of drum grooves for a lot of it there a lot of the time the bass drums were pushed they were in line with the 808s there which were ferocious when they needed to be for most part some of them were a bit more gentle but ultimately a lot of the 808s were incredibly loud within the mixes but like the drum parts in general the hi-hats and snares were pretty 
well layered there and I just feel as if we were just trying to make really loud songs. And I think for the most part that was, I mean, it was definitely the effect that we had there. The sixth track, um, I Wish You, was I think in my opinion a little bit sort of more kind of gentle in the layering there. And I, I think part of the reason why maybe I said less in some of the later tracks is because by the fifth track, because of a lack of dynamic range in these pieces, your brain, even with someone who's trying to focus and like really pay attention to these songs, your, your brain just glazes over because a lot of it is very similar. When you have a similar motif, which was the case for most of, if not all of these tracks, even with the various layers, like you have four minutes of the same motif and it just, it's just, it's a little bit of too much of the same, which is why I'm so thankful that we had occasional sort of extra layers and variations like the rap parts and the sort of like the higher range sort of falsetto sort of synthy lead parts on the vocals for example and like i uh, but i think a track like i wish you because of how sort of more how gen how the, the drums are a bit gentler in that track but it's more smoothed out less harshness to the, the overall tone of them the bass lines the keys etc were some of the movements the, the organs should i say with that were a bit gentler there or some plucked elements there it just felt a bit more sort of like palatable and therefore it was easier to appreciate what was going on instrumentally with some of those extensions or triads within the mix you wanted to sort of um, interact with it because it was a bit friendlier sounding there is like valid sort of like reasons to have the more intense sounding 808s and kicks and stuff like that and it sounds great but just over an extended period of time it can be good to come up for air and have some of those kind of like quieter elements which is why i've sort of like been talking about and potentially need more dynamic range in these mixes even with i wish you but that's more of a post-production thing more than anything ultimately if we had keys they were either kind of like melodies or arpeggios on the right hand potentially highlighting parts of the major or minor triads there in the upper sort of chord progressions there a few sparkles with sort of synth pads and stuff like that the organs with a bit of rotary verb or something like that on them or a bit of oscillation going in there kind of gentle with i wish you and i think that there were also some so occasional sort of like sparkly pads up in the top end there but but it's very sort of subtle we had the bass lines highlighting the the chord progressions there or the root notes of those and those were the fundamentals we had throughout there were motifs that were repeated throughout to suit the mood that we had often we would try and like i didn't feel with any of these pieces that we necessarily i'd have to listen to them all again i don't remember any of these pieces specifically being deliberately designed to suit sort of match the story we were telling it's like we knew to put major or minor um parts together right with major or minor sort of like sad songs there and we understood a style of music we wanted to do but i don't think the songs necessarily absolutely correlated to the story that we were being told i think the mood of i wish you with the vocalists trying to sort of have a more sort of sense sort of like intimate approach to some of the the lines there was and i suppose some of the spoken parts like about the i'm not the kind of person you need to be or i'm not going to be who you are etc that was that attitude was was made sense for the vocals of the lyrics and stuff like that and with the theme but for the most part the themes didn't necessarily totally reflect what we were discussing the stories fair parts of it did but it more seemed like we wanted to create tracks over music that we like to tell stories on top of that and i'm wondering if there's more to do in future pieces that we could do well, that we could do to kind of further sort of like connect our instrumental parts to the, the stories whether that be through foley whether it be specific instruments associated with that but either way it's, it's fine the studio recording mixia mastering it was it was loud it was loud dude i mean like even when the last track we had like a, a, a reasonable sense of dynamic range for the singer male singer to be able to be heard over the mix do their sort of vibratos and legato passages there have harmonies on the sides there you know there was great use of the the, the stereo field there were rises with the synths and everything like that that was kind of cool there were parts there was filtering of the synths and other parts of the the mix as well there when you to even put the vocals down occasionally it's just the tracks and i've said this so many times we needed there to be more of a difference between the quiet and loud parts there we needed and then to be fair we had like a fade out near the end with i wish you you know i think ultimately yeah, yeah no that i'd say out of the six i wish you was probably the, the the best track overall the vocal modulation for rose blossom sevens vocal specifically was fine there stylistically it was good and the rapping parts were nice too it was nice to not have that modulation over those in the spoken parts as well it made it seem a bit more sort of like authentic and down to earth but there were parts that of the of the arrangement we didn't get necessarily as cleanly because the kicks and basses were so dominant and I understand it can sound cool when you've got that kind of push sub bass there and the kind of gritty kind of distorted parts. I think it can be good for like a sometimes thing, but that also might be a subjective thing. And I know there's a lot 
lot of people that like this kind of music as well that like purposefully permanently bass pushed and clearly, clearly Rose Blossom Sevens does as well and that's okay as well just I'm being transparent as a reviewer um, I'm probably gonna need to have a nap after this because I've got a bit of a headache after listening to that and that isn't because I think it's bad it's just that the consistency of that loudness can kind of actually affect, kind of give people headaches uh, but it also could be because they're too loud through the headphones i've got the settings too loud but anyways moving on from that they're loud there's pumping it's probably deliberate because of the side chaining of the kicks and stuff like that they just want loud tracks and that's fine this is my review of these tracks from anacno robes blossom sevens hopefully you enjoyed them if you did please go show them some love via their various social medias and their youtube music page and stay cool and stay safe and please remember to support your local musicians and artists at this point in time as either help more than ever thought of crazy stuff going on in the world and i will catch you in the next review spider hands out